Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Java series. In this video, I'll be teaching you about the ternary operator. Okay guys, welcome back to another Java episode. Like I said, I'll be teaching you about the ternary operator in Java. And uh, so the ternary operator is really a shorthand, shorthand way of writing an if else statement using that returns a value and it has to return a value okay so you may have seen this before in programs and you it's basically a one line if statement or if else statement because it has a if and else branch inside of it technically um and it really intimidated me for a while because it looks kind of scary it just looks confusing but it's really really simple and i don't know why i don't know why it took me so long to uh start actually using it but for uh, about a year now I've started incorporating them into my programs because I've been, I became more comfortable using them and understanding how they work. And I use them all the time now. So I want to show you guys how to do it because they're really, really useful. So let's start off by giving you an example of how you would do it using just a regular if and else statement. So we'll have a message, so string message. And like I said, it has to return a value for it to be uh, used with a ternary operator. So we're going to have an if statement that just sets the value of message. So we'll say if, and the condition will say true. So it's always true, whatever, it doesn't matter. And inside of here, we'll do message is equal to, then we can say hello world, world. And then otherwise, we'll say message is equal to goodbye world. Okay, simple if statement, there we go. Now it's not a operator in the traditional sense, like math operators where you have to pass in, you know, an operand on either side, like one plus two, one and, one and two are different operands that uh, the operator operate on. It's called ternary because there's three, right? So a ternary operator requires three operands, okay? So the first operand is the condition. The second is the expression or value to be returned if true. And the third one is the expression or value to be returned if false, okay? So let me show you how you can do it now. So we're gonna set message equal to the ternary operator since it returns one of these values here. So first is the condition. So we'll say uh, just true, true. And then after you put the condition, you're gonna put a question mark that signifies that you want to use the ternary operator. And then after the question mark, you're gonna put the expression or value to be returned if true. So we'll say hello world, like we did up here, we're setting it uh, we're setting message equal to hello world if it's true, which lines up here. So hello world. And then for the else, you're going to put a, a just a regular colon, not a semicolon. And then after that colon, you're going to put the value that's going to be returned if it's false. So goodbye world. Okay. And ignore the syntax highlighting here. Uh, IntelliJ is just giving this warning because it's always true. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. So anyway, uh, if we print this out, of course, we're going to get hello world. Simple enough, right? Let's check it out. Boom, there we go, we get hello world, awesome. So there you go, that's a simple ternary operator. It's broken down into three operands. First one is the condition, second one is the true, the third one is the false. And now these are values, right? These are string values, but like I said, it can be an expression, meaning that if you want to, you can put an expression, like for example, a math expression that it returns a value when it's done being uh, calculated, I guess you could say. So instead of returning hello, hello world, we can do one plus one because we know that Java is going to evaluate this math expression here and then put the value that it equals in place of this behind the scenes. And it's just giving a warning because we need a string to be returned, not a number. So if we change message to integer, no problem. It'll work now. There we go. So now we gotta change this one to something like two plus two, doesn't matter. But anyway, the point is, is that you can put anything here as long as it returns a value for your ternary operator, okay? So let's give you another example. Um, in my experience, they're most useful when you have to do something that's in line. So let's say that you're trying to output a message or send someone a message in your program, and you want that message to be different depending on the conditions of the program, like a variable or something like that. And you could just, you know, make an if branch or an else branch to output a different message, or you could have it all in one line. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So we can have a boolean here. We'll call it one game. We'll set it to false because they lost the game. And then we'll have an integer points. So this is the amount of points that they get when they finish the game, win or lose. All right, now let's output a message depending on if they won or lost. So we'll say if one game, if they won, we'll say s out, the game has finished. You won with 
the amount of points, points. So it says the game has finished, you won with 69 points. Otherwise, if they lost the game, we'll say the game has finished, you lost with 69 points, if I can type, oh my gosh. There we go. And so there's only a subtle difference between this one here and this one here, the, the string that you're passing into the S out, right? So it's kind of a waste of space because we can make this more concise using the itinerary operator. But first let's go ahead and run this so you can just see the output. It's simple enough, we'll get the second one here. There we go, the game is finished, you lost with 69 points. Now to simplify this, we'll leave that up there for now. We'll just rewrite it and so now we'll do S out. We'll say the game has finished. U, and then now we want to have a ternary operator that changes based on if they won or lost, okay? Or outputs a different message depending on if they won or lost, okay? So if they won, we're gonna output return one. If they lost, return lost, all right? And we're gonna put it inside of these parentheses here. So the first thing is gonna be the condition. So one game, then you're gonna have your question mark. So what happens if it's true? We're gonna do one, that's what's gonna be returned. Otherwise, return lost. All right, so that's our ternary operator. Depending on what the condition is, it's gonna return one or lost, and then we can just keep going with our string here. We can say uh, with, and then the amount of points, points. There we go. So that may, it may look a little confusing if it's your first time working with ternary operators, but it's actually really, really simple. Basically, literally just an inline if statement that returns a value, okay? So let's rerun this. Let's get rid of this. We run it, and we should get the same value. And boom, the game is finished. You lost with 69 points. Very, very simple, okay? So yeah, you can use ternary operators in many different circumstances, but this is the one I find myself using most often, to be honest, uh, whenever I'm using them. So you may find it uh, useful in your situations. So let's just give you one more example here just to nail the, put the nail in the coffin, as they say, I guess, <laughs> um, whatever that means. So we'll say string message is equal to, and we'll say if they have a certain amount of points, we'll say you are champion. Otherwise, if they did not get a certain amount of points, we'll say you need to practice more, okay? So we'll say points greater than 60, we'll do, how about 50? So if the points is greater than 50, then we're gonna return you are champion. Otherwise, after the colon, put you need to practice more. All right, simple enough, and then we'll output that message, boom, chicka boom, boom. And now it should say you are champion because we have 69 points, perfect. Now, sometimes you may find yourself in a circumstance where you don't want to output a message at all if it's false, okay? Or even true, it doesn't matter. And this is actually something I found myself doing in other languages like JavaScript, for example. Um, there's a framework called React.js where I'm, it's a front-end framework where you can, you know, display stuff to the, the browser and all that stuff, right? And sometimes I find myself like checking to see if they're authenticated, right? If they have logged into my website, then you display the stuff onto the screen. Otherwise, if they're not logged in, don't show anything at all, right? So sometimes you wanna use a ternary operator just because of the fact that it's easy to use and it's very concise, but for the else, maybe you don't wanna put anything. In that case, you can just put a empty string or maybe no, depending on what is allowed in that situation, right? So just know that you, you don't always have to return something of substance, you can just pass in what is there, whatever is valid for what can be assigned to, for example, a string object, right? or whatever the data type is. And of course, you don't have to surround this with a uh, parentheses here. You could just leave it. Um, but I think it's just more clear if it's grouped together what you're doing. So do that if you want to. And that's it. That's the ternary operator in Java. Hopefully you now understand how to use it and you can now look through your code that you've written to see if there's anything you can simplify using the ternary operator. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. 
And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.